Okay, so let's start off with an introduction and tell me how you got into this photography madness with dog shows. Well, I grew up in it. I'm third generation of dog shows. My parents and my grandparents. Grandparents were the breeders. My dad started the dog show photography in 1946 after World War II. Um, as it goes, he uh, was working as a camera person in Warshalls in Seattle, and someone said, you're a photographer, and, and here we go. You know, dog shows, 101. So as I grew up, I was always at dog shows with my parents, or I was in the kennel working with the dogs. And at age 15, I did my first all breed show by myself. I couldn't drive. I, they flew me to Billings, Montana, and I did the show, came back. Of course, that was 1970. And from then on, I stayed in dog shows. Now, not, now, not all the time was it photography. For 15 years, I was a superintendent. So I've, I've done a lot of the different things through dogs. How many people do you run into while you're taking these photos that you feel truly know the standards of their, their breeds? Very few. Very few people have actually read their standard. One of the, and it doesn't matter whether you go from the very beginning novice to the handler that's been there a long time to the owner that's been there a long time. I find a lot of people don't know their standards and have never read them. And I will ask them that. Have you ever read the standard? Well, I've kind of looked at it. I, I, I see on a lot of the, these groups on Facebook where people are, are new, they say, okay, I'm getting a new puppy. And the first thing they're looking for is a confirmation class. Um, somebody asked some advice once and, and I said, well, instead of looking for a confirmation class when you have a puppy that's 12 weeks old, um, why don't you start learning about your breed? Why don't you start learning, you know, open up your standard, go to Wikipedia, hit all those hyperlinks, go to different places where you can really start to truly learn about your breed, country of origin, what its job was, things like that. How will these things help the person with a winner's photo? So to know you're about your breed, you the more you know, the more you're able to understand how the dog is put together. And when I say put together, how the legs should be while stacking the dog, while hand stacking the dog, not baiting the dog into a stack, hand stacking the dog. Where do you actually put and where do you move the, from the shoulder, the foot to, to where it needs to go? If you know the standard of your breed, you'll have an understand of when I say layback of shoulder. Why does, why does that look like that dog's front is behind the neck versus coming out of the neck? You might understand what I might say when I say I need you to bring the hawk back because there are times where people don't realize what a hawk is. You need to know what the anatomy is of your breed. They work so hard at trying to get these wins, and then all of a sudden, you know, you look at some of the, the, the expressions on the judges' faces when these people are trying to stack their dogs. It's like, it, it almost looks embarrassing sometimes, and, and it's, I, I think the people just need to learn where to go to get this information. If they have time, the handler, the owner handler, novice, has time to stop and talk with someone like me about their win photo. And they've been up there and it's been a stressful moment. And, and to be real, the hardest part of showing dogs is for taking the photos. By far and away, I'm asking you to move the feet a quarter inch. And people don't realize how difficult that is. It doesn't matter if it's two inches off in the ring while you're showing, it might help but then you have movement too. But when you are up there and your dog is not cooperating and that judge is getting frustrated and you feel that and all of a sudden it's taking five minutes to take 
a simple photo, that's when people need, especially the novices, to stop. And, and hopefully the photographers out there are receptive to this because we are part of their solution to help them. If us as photographers can help them stack their dog and prepare their dog, and preparing that is practice. Practice at home, in front of a mirror, stacking your dog, rewarding your dog for a, a great job. There is a lot to it, but the frustration that I see and the judges really don't, can't help or won't help or don't have the time to help during that time because now they have to get back and start judging. So who do these people have to go to? And if we have a lineup, then it might be another 15 minutes. Stick around. Ask us a question. If you find a photographer is not willing to help, well, ask someone else because they should be. Let's see if we can break this down into, you know, some easy categories. And in, in my thoughts in working with people with, with teaching people how to show dogs, let's talk about the first thing, animal behavior. Um, how, do, how do you feel they can build a better relationship with their dogs so the dogs aren't going to be fighting them during those periods when they're getting those winter photos taken? To understand behavior is a total different subject and where we started this conversation in reading your standard understanding the behavior of the breed you have chosen starts right there when you are getting ready to show the dog and you're bringing it in and you you win the behavior of the dog is going to be amplified if you have never tried to hand stack or stack for a picture and it is not going to know what to do. Have you ever worked with pictures and how? What happens with your dog? Is the photographer going to throw something or is this one where we have ears down? Whether it's a spaniel where you're waiting, an a Irish setter, where you're waiting for that perfect moment, you're waiting for the handler, or you're throwing something. You're throwing the toy to get that attention so it's at the right spot. If you don't know what to anticipate and what's going to happen with your dog, you will not get a good photo. It's just plain and simple. You're just going to be trying things you're going to get frustrated because you don't know what the photographer and the wants. And the photographer doesn't have, granted, we get maybe two shots of your dog and it's going to happen in a minute. And the judge, you're, you're dealing on a judge's time, which might be very short. And all of a sudden that dog isn't doing because the frustration just went down that lead right to the dog. You got frustrated, the dog feels it, and now it isn't going to cooperate. Not the way you think it should at that point in time. It's not the dog's fault. It's just not. So let's say we have a dog that we need to start training for expression. What kind of tips can you give people to prepare them for that 60 seconds in front of that camera with that judge? As a novice, I highly recommend, because as a novice, most likely you're not going to win the first couple times out. You come out of the ring and you go look and see and seek out where the photography is happening, whether it's in the ring or at a backdrop, go watch. Go see your breed being taken pictures of. Watch the handlers that have been there and see how they're presenting their dog. Because this is a presentation of the dog. This is the subject you want to present it. It's just not a photo of the dog. You're presenting the dog there. Imagine your dog out there and what you're going to do to present that dog. Knowing firsthand 
where to have your hand on the leash. Different breeds take different looks on where that leash is going to be held, whether it's right at the back of the neck, whether they're going to lengthen it out and present the dog a different way, whether you have a long leash, whether you're holding the dog under the chin, where the tail is going to be set, whether you're holding the tail, whether you're not holding the tail. There is, you need to look at your breed and see how it's being photographed. Once you see that, you'll have a better understanding when it is your turn, when you do win, and you will, and get that start of a good photo. Because then you can build on photos. The first one is always going to be the experience. Oh my gosh, there it is. And as time goes on, it becomes better and better and better. And then you get a different dog and that temperament's different. Then we can get into the, the little nuances of the particular in the breed and how to present that particular dog because not all in one breed are presented the same way. Some dogs need to be on a little angle. Some dogs need to be profile. Some dogs need to be three quarter. So where does your dog fit into that category and little tiny angles make huge differences. What would you say if somebody came up to you and say, I'm brand new, you know, I'm just learning how to do this and um, I would really love to pay you to take a photograph of my dog and I just so I can see what that experience is like. I actually don't quite get something like that, but I get people wanting to take a picture of their dog with no stress. And they feel the stress when they have to have a judge and everything there. So they will come to me when I am not busy and I'll say, let's go over there to the podium, put your dog up there. And the first thing I want you to do is just relax, take a couple breaths because it, it, it doesn't have to be stressful. It's, it's the people that are letting the stress get to them. So when they come to me as a novice, and I've had enough over the years that we'll just go up there and take, not even take pictures. Put the dog on the podium. Stack it on the podium. Give it a treat. Tell it's good. Bring it down. Put it back up again. Do it two or three times. I'm not busy. I encourage that as a show photographer who wants to get as top quality, the best photo I can for you, bring that dog up. When I'm not busy, put it on the podium. Practice with it. Practice will make, make perfect. It really will. So I, from what you're saying, people should really start to develop a, a good relationship with the, their local show photographer and tell them about some of the things and ask permission to, to go onto the equipment and things like that. Make sure that they're not impeding anything that you're doing there, but I see so many people, they go, they don't even think about making that relationship with the show photographer, and that's the one who's going to make them look fantastic if they're doing their job. So Absolutely. let's give some tips to, you know, how they can approach the photographers and, and what are some things they should say or ask or, or do. Check out your local geographic area photographer where you're showing your dog check out that photographer, see if they're approachable, talk to them about it, say, I'm, I'm, tell them they're new. I would like to get a really good picture. Can you help me? Establishing a great working relationship, it doesn't matter whether you're new or you're a 30 year handler. And what I have, which is a great thing here in the Northwest is all the, all the handlers, all the people know me. And if they will come to me and say, you know, Randy, this dog is just a, a little bit different, so let's do a little bit different angle on it. And I'm listening because I want them to. Or they'll come up to me and say, hey, do, do we have time just to do a few shots on our own? I want to see how this dog's looking. Um, handlers do that a lot. There is no reason someone new to this can't do that. Establish a, a working 
relationship. And that means a working relationship with your photographer. They are busy. There's only, I think, 30 of us in the United States. We get extremely busy and we do a lot of dogs all year long. So sometimes it might not seem like we have the time. Just wait. Be patient. Find out when we can. And the ones that are approachable, pick their brain. Find out. Ask them questions. They see this all the time. I have a lot of people that ask me on winner's photos with toy breeds where they're not comfortable on podiums. They'd re they prefer to have tables, but a lot of times that's not an option. What are your thoughts to that? Hmm. I, that happens a lot now. I understand if you have a physical problem and it's hard for you to get down to the podium. And unfortunately, the superintendent is the one who's bringing the podium. We provide the camera the backdrop. And a toy table isn't usually available because it's in a ring. If at group time, and we have rings shutting down, I'll go get one and bring it over for the people that want a toy on there. If you look at the handlers who are doing this, the top handlers very seldom put them on toy tables. There is a reason for that. It's presentation. I know a lot of people want the close-up. The toy should be, you want it to look a little bit larger. You want to bring it in quite a bit. And for a lot of things, that's great. For your personal portfolio, I do agree. If you're doing a group shot, you're a group winning, group placing toy, you'll always see them on the podium. This is where the handler, and you wonder why the handlers win sometimes, is they are able to put that dog especially a toy dog, and present it correctly. Watch them do it. If you don't have that option, then you have to make do. So right, widen your repertoire of what you're doing showing your dog, how you're presenting the dog. Sometimes at some of these very small shows, they might not have that toy table, and you have to present it on a ramp. Learn how to do it. It doesn't have to happen all the time, but learn. Because not always will it be the greatest lighting, here we go, we can get this perfect show shot. You want to be prepared as much as you can, because it's, it's you that has to be prepared. The dog is just following you. That's a great answer. Uh, I, because I've seen so many times where people you know, have these toys, and all they do is they practice on the table, 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 table. Um, but also when I teach my classes, I, I tell them to prepare for many other things. And, I mean, that just proves that point right there. You, you, you see the top handlers with these top toys. They're not worried about a table because they've taught this dog to free stack. Yes. Looking out in front, three quarters. I mean, just beautiful presentation. Yes. And, and that, to me, has way more impact than just standing on a table. So, Absolutely. So for those, Absolutely. For those people who, who want that table, let's, I, I would say, I'm, I'm going with you here, let's drop the crutch, let's expand things, and let's make some wow photos. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I like mean, that. look at the top toy dog out there. I just did it this last weekend. And... There was never a time where it was going to be put on a toy table, ever. It was presented at the podium, and that's the way they all are. But if you want to get those extraordinary shots of the dog, again, practice grooming, practice the dog stacking, practice the dog staying. Depending on the breed is a, a lot of different avenues 
on how you're going to present that dog. What are the dog's qualities? Every dog has qualities. Every dog has qualities. Find those. Don't be kennel blind. Look, there be things in your dog that aren't good, but find the quality. Show them off. It might have a great skull. Show that off. It might not. Angle the dog. Practice looking. Take as many pictures at home before you go to a professional. Sit in your backyard. Take pictures of that dog. See where it is. Because looking through a lens versus looking at it as it's just standing there are two different things. Also, don't stand tall and look at your dog. When I'm doing a show shot, it is always off the shoulder. Sometimes certain dogs are a little bit short, so I shoot up on them. Very little bit. Sometimes they're a little tall. I shoot down on them. But get down. Get down. Get on your hands and knees. Get or put the dog up where you can look at it on, on its planes, not on yours. So when, you're, when you want this extraordinary shot, I want to go to the... Um, the photographer that's going to do the portrait work. Before you go in there, it's just like me. You don't bring the dog in and not know what your quality of your dog is. You've just been told by a judge the quality of your dog. Okay, now because it's quality by standard of the breed, we're trying to take as quality a standard of the breed as we can. But when you're doing a portrait, it isn't quite that. And you still need to get down and look what the quality is of your dog. What do you like best about your dog? There's a great eyes. It, it, where? Where does it, what angles? And get down on the floor and look at your dog. Don't stand up and look at it. You can't see anything standing up. Let's move on to expression. And with expression, um, should the person look at what the dog show photographer has for toys? Do they go out by squeakies? Do they throw loud objects? What are your recommendations of, of what they can do at home to train to help you get that photo? If they have someone that can help them. Don't have to have an extra camera. Depending on your breed, you can have someone throw a squeaky, a ball, something up there, out there, that will get the dog's attention. Sometimes it's bait. Watch Doberman handlers. They are very good at baiting the dog up, tossing the bait, and then coming back to the tail, getting the correct tail set, and waiting for the shot. The dog is trained. When we're done, the dog goes, gets the bait, the treat. Reward the dog. So that's an easy one. If I'm throwing the toy, and to get, and you have somebody helping at you at home, someone throws it, dog holds its stack, then you're able to go, reward the dog. Always reward the dog for good. Wait till the dog does it, then reward. We had a dog that was a Saluki years and years ago, and I could not get a great, great shot of this dog. In the ring, the dog was stunning. It's career pointing, best in show dog. And we would try, I talked with the handler, I talked with the owner, and I said, what does this dog like at home? And they said, oh, it likes a certain type of food we feed it. I said, so why aren't you bringing it here? You're just having liver in your pocket, and the dog's going, ah, so what? So the next show, we brought, he, they brought the food that this dog particularly loved. And from that moment on, all we used it for was photos. And we got phenomenal photos. You we're able to get in the dog's head and figure it out. There's where practice at home works. And the handler talking with me. There are certain times 
What I get to is I get to know the dog because it's been to me so many times. It's literally, I get dogs shaking, waiting for me to take their photo. And once we're done, they're happy. They come see me. Those are the ones I remember. You, the stack shots that, that it's just the same every time, not so much. But the ones that truly love the photograph, that get excited, know what they're doing, they can't wait to get up there. I tend to remember those. If you could open up a school for people, not saying you have time to do this, but to teach people basics with these puppies to get them started to, you know, what were, what would a couple of little skills, um, what were the, what would the first skills be that you would tell these people to teach their puppies? First thing to do is get a mirror. Whether you have a large breed or a small breed, get a mirror and stack the dog in front of the mirror and look at what you're doing. See how you're moving the dog. It doesn't matter whether they're puppies or adults. See how you're moving the dog as a new person to the show ring. I see new people moving, I, moving way too much. The animal is moving way too much. The funny parts are when I say I need that front foot moved back a little bit and they move their front foot back, not the dogs. That does happen. It's about the dog and looking where you move that dog. It's, if you look down, the dogs, if they're winning, are pretty well going to stack themselves. And I see too many people wanting to talk to the judge and just start moving the dog around. The dog's perfect. And then they mess the dog up. This happens over and over and over again. Look down at your dog. Look down. Where are the feet right now? Always, pretty much always, start from the front. Don't ever start from the rear. Start from the front. If the front's a little bit off and you're looking down, see where that shoulder is. It might be that the outside front foot needs to come back. But if it's right, then that's inside front foot needs to come forward. You need to understand. And that's where the mirror comes into place is you look at your dog. If your dog is what we call posting and the front, it's, the front is out in front of it, at what point does that shoulder lay right? In the mirror, you can see it. Looking straight down at the dog, you can't always see it as a new person. A lot of the old handlers, they can see that. They've been trained. They've looked at it thousands and thousands of times. So my, the very first thing, puppies, adults, I don't care. Get a mirror and look at your dog in the mirror while you're moving the dog around. Number one, and go everything slow. Slow life down. Move nice and gentle, don't jerk, slowly. And get the dog to stack. Reward the dog, do it again. Reward the dog, do it again. Pretty soon, it's going to be easier and easier and easier. Have you ever seen a situation where you thought it was just really cool where you saw a dog pushing buttons big time and the handler was just like flipped a little switch and wasn't going to get emotional and just basically just waited the dog out, let them do their little thing. And then all of a sudden, bam, the, the dog just cooperated after that. Real professional handlers know how to do that. The, the really good ones watch them. They, they can do it. Whether it's for me at, at the podium or whether it's in the ring. They know how to, <clears throat> and a lot of times it's pulling the dog out, taking the dog around, moving it, changing its mindset. It's in its own mindset at that point. Move it. Take it off the podium, walk it back, bring it back up. It's in a totally different mindset at that point. So as a handler, the top handler, oh yes, I've seen that over and over again. That one is a great one. And, I, and most of the handlers here, I know. I know how they're going to present their dog. I don't have to say, in fact, I don't want to say anything until they're ready. 
that's where photographers, in my opinion, get into problems. They're trying to direct before it's time to direct. They're trying to be the big cheese and, and you're not yet. Wait for the handler, wait for the person to get to that point. Now if we need to adjust it, small amounts. But wait, wait to see where they're going to put it. I think that is very important as a photographer to wait to see what's going to happen. That dog might move at the last second and you were ready to say something and you missed the shot. Or the other side of that is the, the handler, the novice handler, isn't ready and the dog just decided to shift weight and now it's perfect and they are not ready to take that shot. Look at your dog. Feel your dog. See what its motions are. It will tell you right now whether it's, it's ready or not. You can feel that in a dog. You put your hands on it. You, you love it. You, you caress it. You, you can mold it. So I want to thank Eric for coming here. This has been a great thing. I hope he wants to do it again. It is needed. I would love to go into depth later about the advantages of taking that dog show photo to the next level and I know everyone can do it. It's just whether you want to spend the time. I'm Randy Roberts. Thank you. Cut! That was beautiful. Was that all right? I think this is going to be great, especially like where you left it right there. This is, this is the beginning. This is the first part. This is to get people started.